Look, I think we can all agree that it is a phenomenal time to be a man. You know, society wants us to be as happy and confident and masculine as possible. Girls are chasing us. They're showering us with validation. They'll do anything to get our attention. It is just great. It's also not true. I think the reality is basically the opposite of what I just said. And that's why today I wanna to break down five rules I created for myself to guarantee that I'm taking the correct actions to maximize my confidence, my money, and my well-being as a man, given these new realities. All right, rule one, escape the matrix. It seems blatantly obvious now that major news networks have clear narratives they're trying to push. You know, they tend to be owned by corporate conglomerates that have very obvious corporate and political interests. The obvious example is CNN, which just kind of pushes what the Democratic Party wants to be pushed. But now, especially after the Twitter files that Elon Musk released, for example, it's obvious that it goes a lot deeper than this. And even major social platforms like Twitter, before the 2020 election, they were sent Entering articles related to Hunter Biden about one week before the election due to the request of the Democratic Party. Now, it's important to be aware of these realities so that you don't become a victim of the matrix and just become indoctrinated into somebody else's belief system that was created to serve them, not to serve your best interests. Right now, it seems like it's this more woke left-wing ideologies being subconsciously pushed on people. But an equally dangerous problem I see a lot of young men falling victim to today is that they're being indoctrinated by the opposite extreme and they're spending all of their time and energy consuming this anti-woke content and it makes them feel enlightened and superior to the masses but at the end of the day they are still a victim of the matrix because on a daily basis so much of their time and energy is being consumed by this cultural war instead of focusing on their own lives. And look, I'm not saying that wokeness and cancel culture is not a problem. It, it is, but I'm saying a bigger problem is when you prioritize your involvement in the culture war above your own life. The point is you wanna make sure that you're forming your own beliefs based on your own experiences instead of just taking someone else's beliefs and copying and pasting them into your brain. Finally, we got the new car back in our hands. Basically, what we did is we did a special type of wrap on it called an Expel Stealth Wrap. It's actually the same thing we did with the Tesla, and what it does is it keeps the same original color as the car, but it changes the finish from glossy to matte. It also adds a layer of paint protection for the car in case like rocks kick up or someone opens their door into the car. And honestly, I was a bit hesitant because I'd never seen a car this Nardo gray color, but like matted out. But safe to say, now that I've actually seen it in person, I'm pumped. I like it way more. Like it's, it's, you've never seen anything like this. All right, rule two, fuck the gray area. So something I noticed when I was last single is that every time I would simp for a girl, like I'd find a way to rationalize it and make it make sense and make an excuse in my mind to do it because women have become very good. They've become very proficient at leading us on where you know, maybe you're, you're texting a girl trying to set up a date and she makes some excuse and then I'm like, oh, maybe she's not even interested in me. But then like two days later, she hits me up again like, hey, how's it going? I'm like, shit, maybe she is interested in me or she actually, flakes on a date last minute and I'm like damn like screw this girl I'm never gonna see her again I don't even text her back but then a week later you get that like hey how's your week been going message and you're like shoot it seems like actually she is interested so maybe I should pursue her again and in these situations we're clearly continuing to pursue a girl who has shown us zero respect and that is the definition of simping that's how we end up in the friend zone that's how we end up as the pin pal who she just keeps around for validation and that's why I created the rule for myself fuck the gray area because when we're in the gray area that maybe she's interested in me but maybe she's not, that's when we find an excuse to simp. So if I've asked the girl out and I got her number within two or three messages, I'm going to ask, okay, cool. Does Wednesday or Thursday night work better for you? And unless she says something like Wednesday night's great for me, or maybe she'll say I'm super busy this week, but does Saturday or Sunday work for you? Any other response, even if it's like, sorry, I'm really busy this week, or she doesn't reply. That is now the gray area. If she's not immediately down to hang out, you're in the gray area. And at this point, you just don't message her back. Even if she texts you back, you don't message unless it's explicitly asking you about your availability to hang out because otherwise you're still in the gray area and now she's just stringing another simple on. You don't need to get closure. You do not need to be a thousand percent sure. It does not matter how hot she is because you're gonna hang on to this hope and that hope is going to distract you from your main purpose in life. It's gonna distract you from meeting other girls and it's gonna eat away your self-confidence because you're gonna keep questioning, why am I not enough for this girl? I just realized this video is going live the day after Christmas. So Merry Christmas, Beast Nation. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'd, I'd feel awful if 
I didn't give you guys a dope Christmas present. So look, it's about to be New Year's and we're all trying to level up in 2023. And I've learned that leveling up your life, it starts with your style because when I have a fresh outfit on, I just move more confidently the entire day. And that is why right now we are kicking off a huge flash sale for Edge Lifestyle. So you have a chance to pick up some of our dopest looks at insane prices. Right now I'm rocking the OG hoodie with the OG joggers. And this has been my go-to daily driver outfit all winter long. The hoodie and the joggers are made from our ultra cotton fabric that is fleece lined. It's insanely cozy and comfortable, but they still have sleek athletic fit. So not only do you feel good, you look amazing. I'd also recommend picking up our new premium bomber jacket. This is the most versatile item in my entire wardrobe. Just throw it over a t-shirt or hoodie, pair it with some joggers or jeans, and your outfit is on point. And if you're looking for a go-to t-shirt, I'd recommend our OGT. It's nice and fitted around the biceps and shoulders to accentuate your physique, but it has that swoop bottom hem, so it's nice and loose around the waist. All those items I mentioned and much, much more have been marked on discount on our sales section, plus my coupon code, normally worth 10%. We are going to double that to 20% only for the next three days. It's time for all of us to be looking fresh as hell in 2023. Just go to edgelifestyle.com or click that first link in description to show Job now. Rule three, choose a new path. So there's this quote from Marcus Aurelius, the man I have tattooed on my arm, and it might be my favorite quote from him. Think of yourself as already dead. You've already lived your life. Now take what's left of it and live it properly. It is so simple yet so powerful because usually what prevents us from becoming the man we want to become is the man that we are right now. Like we all have the story of who we are. You know, old David, I used to tell myself the story that I was just awkward and insecure. I was never the type of guy who would approach a girl or, or like flirt with a girl. Sure, I had my strengths. You know, I was good academically. I could be good at getting work done, but socially, that just wasn't me. And so the reason I continued to suck with girls year after year after year was because I had always sucked with girls before that. Like it turns into this catch 22 where, you know, because you're not that type of guy, you're never gonna take the steps to become that type of guy. And that's why for 2023, we all have to do as Marcus said, and we gotta look at ourselves as dead and start living the rest of our life properly. Everything you've done up until this moment is already done. It's history. You know, we've all made mistakes. We've all invested too much time into a career or a girl or a bad habit that that does not serve us going forward, but we want to hold on to it because that's always who we've been. Starting now, think of yourself as dead and live the rest of your life properly. Wake up every day and decide what it is that you actually want to pursue and do that. It doesn't matter what your story has been until now because you get to write the story going forward. Haynes, bro, workout complete. That was a loud one, man. I got a lot of energy after the workout today. Julia? Hey, guys. What's rule number four? I don't know. Shit. <laughs> rule number four, never ask a fish. Are you kidding me? Fish give the best advice. Rule four is to make her choose because we all have this tendency when we encounter a girl we're attracted to, maybe you know it's at the gym, maybe we're at a cafe or a shopping mall, grocery store, maybe we just match with her on online dating. We have this tendency to want to play it safe in order to avoid rejection. So a lot of times we tell ourselves, you know, I'm, I'm gonna play the long game. You know, I'll talk to her, you know, maybe I'll keep talking to her and then eventually I'll win her over and she'll be down to go on a date with me. Like little by little, she'll become attracted to me. And this is bullshit. It's not how attraction works. It's not like the more and more that you're exposed to someone, the more and more attracted you become. In fact, it's it's the opposite. Things are more exciting and they're more fresh when you just meet someone. It's, this, it's the same for girls. And this rule single-handedly changed my dating life more than anything else. When I meet a girl, I'm immediately gonna make her choose. Are you down to hang out with me or not? If you are, that's great. Let's see where this goes. If not, I'm not wasting an ounce more of energy on you. And it's extremely simple to implement. Once you meet a girl, after you chat with her for a few minutes, or if you're online, once you send a couple messages back and forth, you just ask, okay, cool, you seem like a cool girl. Do you wanna hang out sometime? You do not ask, hey, can can I have your number? Can I, can I get your contact? Because what the fuck is that gonna lead to? She might give you her number, but if she's not actually down to meet up with you and explore this thing romantically, what's the point? And the crazy thing is, once I actually got comfortable doing this, girls started to treat me a lot differently because they notice that you're coming to them with this mindset of, look, I genuinely don't care if you're not down to hang out with me, but if you are, th that's awesome. And they're used to having more of like an awkward pressure on them from the guy who's like, oh, come on, like, oh, you have a boyfriend, oh, you can still give me your number, or, or, or maybe, or sorry, maybe we can text a little bit and then we can figure it out. And you're coming from like this no BS point of like, look, we hang out good, not good, 
and that's very attracted to them because you're not depending on them for validation. For the post-workout, we're hitting up a little restaurant called Keto Royale Cafe. Not that I do keto, but it's, it's pretty good. We've been here before. Yeah, it's really good. So we got some all-American pancakes with eggs on top, bacon. I think these are made from like almond flour, but they look pretty, pretty delicious. Eight out of 10. And rule number five is to remember that at the end of the day, you get to create your own rules. It is so easy in this modern world to get stretched between you know someone else's expectation for what you should be or what you think society's standards are that you should live up to or what your parents think you should be or what your friends think is cool but bro, at the end of the day, you get to decide what you're pursuing in life. You get to decide what rules that you create for yourself. Maybe your parents want you to go to medical school and become a doctor because that's what your dad did. Maybe you think that it's gonna be really cool if you're always going out and partying with your friends because that's what they think's cool. Like even in this video, I'm giving you five rules that work for me and have really worked based on my experiences and my life trajectory and everything that I know to be true. And I truly do think that these will serve you well and serve your best interests. But at the end of the day, you have to live your own life. You have to go out there, get your own experience, make your own realizations and decisions about what you wanna do. And if I had just accepted my first career job as a software engineer and followed that path, I would never have gotten to where I am today. The way that I've gotten to where I am, not that I'm the most successful person, I know a lot of people more successful than me, but the way I've gotten here is by just challenging myself to step outside of the, the life that I thought I was gonna live. You know, from software engineer, to personal trainer, to blogger, to podcaster, to YouTuber, to, to business owner, and always just trying out different random shit that I thought was cool. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you click here to check out a recent video I did about three signs that you're still a beta male. And if you're new to the channel, click here to subscribe as I drop two new videos every single week. I will talk to all of y'all in the next video. Stay beastly.